Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Nightline. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I'm your host, Pastor George Moore. And we're just so thankful to the Lord, amen, that He is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think there in Ephesians 4, amen. And I know that the time, amen, is right for God to move in your life. And you've had any needs tonight, I want you to know that He is the one that will meet all your needs, spiritually, physically, financially, amen. Nightline's here for you tonight. You got any prayer requests, just call in tonight, amen. There's some prayer partners back there, amen, that will encourage your life. And we'll get those prayer requests down here and we'll pray over those, amen. Just expecting God to do great and mighty things. Have a wonderful guest tonight, a great friend of mine, uh, Kenny Williamson, Kenny Williamson Ministries. Thank the Lord for him being here tonight. He's going to be sharing in song. We're going to be sharing some word with you tonight just to encourage your life. Amen. Just for you to know that God is for you, and if God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. No weapon formed, Isaiah 40 tells us, will prosper against us. We are the children of the Most High God, and He is moving, hallelujah, and flowing in our lives tonight. Amen. Praise God. Our scripture tonight comes out of 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. And it says here, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making His appeal through us, uh, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Amen. So tonight, amen, the emphasis, amen, is on the church, us, the people of God, that we are ambassadors. In other words, we are a representative of a country. Amen. We're just pilgrims here. This is not our home. Amen. Tonight. Hallelujah. We're just passing through. Amen. We've got a place that's eternal in the heavens. Hallelujah. I want to, amen. I want to talk about it. I want to sing about it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And just let the world know, amen, that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Hallelujah. Eternal life for those that receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. What a moment. Amen. Tonight. You might, you might just be uh, surfing through those channels tonight. But listen, amen, Jesus loves you and He cares for your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're just so thankful tonight. Brother Kenny's going to share a wonderful song, When the Praises Go Up. If you've lost your joy, and you're needing strength Whatever you feel Whatever you think Praise Jesus out loud Till you're no longer bound When the praises go up The glory comes down When the praises go up The glory comes down in the midst of our praise, sweet victory is found. Heaven will hear and echo the sound. When the praises go up, the glory comes down. God made us for joy. He made us for praise. With our voices to sing. And our hands to raise Like myths from the earth That gives back the rain Our praises returns With blessings again So when our praises go up The glory comes down In the midst of our praise Sweet victory is found Oh, heaven will hear and echo the sound. When the praises go up, the glory comes down. Lord, I know you listen to your children pray. So I promise you will hear my voice every day. Praise in your name. Praise 
Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the noontime. Praise Him. Praise Him. Because when our praises go up, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Kenny. Well, just like to introduce tonight my friend, great, great singer, great musician, Brother Kenny Williamson. Good to see you tonight, my brother. Good Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise good the Lord. Good good Amen. Amen. Praise good God. Good. Well, I know you've been on there several times over the years, and your your ministry and song and testimony and how God has brought you in ministry and. But uh, I want you to just take a moment there, Kenny, and just uh, some folks hadn't heard. Uh, I know you can't give all your testimony, but just. Start out and uh, introduce yourself, and then just I, I think it's amazing uh, how physically from uh, being born from that point there, how God uh, brought you in the ministry and so forth. Yeah. Well, my name is uh, Kenny Williamson from Dawsonville, Georgia. Uh, as Brother George said, we've been friends for many years now. I met Brother George, I believe, in 1982, and we've uh, done some great meetings together throughout the years, and God's blessed us. But I am a miracle to be alive. I was born December the 1st, 1963, with a lot of physical deformities and physical and health issues that, uh, that caused me to be placed in the Crippled Children Clinic of Atlanta, Georgia, for 21 years of my life. I was born having a cliff palate. Because of that, I have had uh, 14 major operations on my face. Uh, I was born uh, with low kind of sugar and a pinch nerve on my brain that caused me to go into comas. First three years of my life, I spent most of those first three years, that first three years in the hospital in Atlanta, uh, just hanging on the line by a thread. But I'm grateful, George, that I um, had some parents that believed yes, in did. prayers and, Amen. and sought the Lord and had a relationship with the Lord. And um, when the eight doctors told them in 1966, basically, that they had done all they could do to help me mm. to sustain my life. Praise God. It didn't, it didn't stop their faith believing the Word of God, mm -hmm. and they stood on the Word of God. They stood on the Scripture. Some, yes. Sometimes that's all we got to stand on. Amen. The Word of that's God. it. That's it. And they stood on the eyes of the 53rd chapter. And the fifth verse says, He was wounded by our transgressions. He was bruised by our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon Him. And with his stripes, ye are healed. Amen. Amen. And they, they prayed that over my life, declared that over my life. And I sit here today at 58 years old and haven't mm. went in a coma in 55 Praise years. Praise God. Because God does work miracles. Amen. And he's still a, he's still a healer. And he's still a miracle from God. Um, the Lord's allowed us, because of my testimony, the Lord has allowed us to travel. Mm -hmm. uh, been back now full time on the road for 21 years Praise and God. Um, traveling all across this country and out of the country and um, just sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ because the gospel is good news. Yes, it is. It, it can save you, it can heal you, it can set you free and uh, take care of the needs in your life today, whatever that might be. But we've been back out traveling and um, at nine years old, I instantly began to play the piano one night. I had never taken a lesson in my wow. life. Uh, at that time, I have now to learn how to read and write music, but uh, uh, at that time, I had never taken a lesson, but God instantly gave me a gift in my life of music, and today I play seven instruments. Mm, God has allowed that gift and those miracles to be a faith builder to those that we minister to, to believe God for their miracles. So if you're watching this program tonight, 
and you really need a, a miracle in your yes. life, Hallelujah. God is still on the throne. He's able to meet your needs. Yes, he and be is. Complete. The Bible says all things are possible yes, yes. to them that believe. And we're believers. Amen. Yes, we and are. we're going to join with you tonight. We're going to believe God's going to move in your life. Amen. You know, Brother Kenny, I got to uh, admit your father and your mother there, and uh, uh, they're 1982, and, and through that, you know, uh, I hadn't met you till after I met them, but it all come together. Uh, your father orchestrated putting a meeting together, and uh, right there at Sugar Hill, Georgia, right outside Atlanta, right in there. But uh, anyway, and from there, but I want you to uh, also share your testimony there about the prayer meeting and your mother. What what a wonderful lady she was. What a woman of faith. What a stayed at Charles' home many times. But I want you to share the night during the uh, prayer meeting. Uh, how she, you know, the, that you went over to the piano and started to play. Just share that. It's so amazing how well, God. Well, we, I was, like I said, nine years old at that time. Uh, we attended a little small church there in Beaufort, Georgia, our hometown. And um, my dad worked in Atlanta, which was about 40 miles away. And uh, on a Wednesday night prayer meeting, nobody showed up for church except me and my mother. And actually, me and mother, my mother walked to the church because my mom never drove. And um, we walked to the church, got out there. She cleaned the church, got ready for church. And, um, you know, it, it's church it's church night. You yeah. think somebody's going to show up. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, sometimes that just don't happen. Yeah. These yeah. Days. Yeah. We, we, you put all yeah. effort to it and nobody yeah. shows uh, up. Uh -huh. and so mom had um, cleaned the church, swept the floors, got the song books in order. Uh, got church time, nobody showed up. George, she could have said, well, come on, son. Let's go back to the house. Mm -hmm. Don't look like nothing. we're going to have church tonight. But uh, Mama didn't do that. Mama had a little Bible that she sat on. An, on a, back then, it was plain board pews. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. It wasn't yeah. padded yeah. pews. No, huh? Yeah, wood, you know, yeah. wood uh, bitches. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't, um, we didn't have central air, central heat. Uh, we wished that the... Windows would slide up. That would be the central air <laughs> flowing through, and and um, just a simple little yeah. setting. Uh, but Mom could have said, "Son, come on, let's go on back to the house. Don't look like we're going to have church tonight." But she didn't. She got to her Bible and she mm -hmm. sat on one of those pews and began mm -hmm. to read. Now, if she read for a little while, mm -hmm. her testimony was she just knelt there at the pew and began uh -huh. to pray. She said she first began to thank the Lord for what he'd already done in her life. Right. God, thank you for giving me a Christian home, and thank you for giving me a child late in life, and thank you, God, that although the enemies tried to take him from me numerous times, mm -hmm. you have worked miracle, physical miracles in his life, mm -hmm. and uh, I thank you for that. Sometimes we need to praise him for what he's already done yes. uh, before we start asking. Sometimes we're just a bunch of takers, and we just won't, won't, Come won't. On, but go ahead. Sometimes we just need to praise him and give him the glory for what he's already yes. done in our life. And that's what you begin to do. But she said, but God, would you hear my prayer one more time? Hallelujah. Would you touch my sides? I know you spared my child for some reason. I don't know what that reason may be, but I know you have a purpose on his life. And he reason. said, God, would you use my son to be a blessing into other people's lives? And while mom was over there praying that prayer, I didn't hear George anything. I mm -hmm. didn't hear this. I was just doing my own little thing because we wasn't having church. But um, the Holy Spirit heard what yes. my mother said. Yes. And it stopped me in my tracks and I turned and walked back to uh, up on the platform of this church, and there was an old upright piano. Now, but, uh, granted, and this was in you know 1972. Mm -hmm. Things was mm -hmm. not as professional. As right. we, we don't have the strobe lights and the fog machines <laughs> and the electronic keyboards w and wooden and, uh, benches, wooden uh, platform, uh, and an we, old upright we, piano. We, we were very primitive, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and. Um, but I walked up on that platform to old up, upright piano. Some of the ivories broke off the keys. It wasn't in tune. It sounded like a honky tonk <laughs> piano, you know. <laughs> yeah. But um, I climbed up on the piano stool and put my hands down on some keys. Oh, I, ne I didn't know that what I didn't know what key that was. I never had played before in my life. But it made the chord, and then my hands went to another position. I made another chord, and to my amazement, I began to play an old song. 
mm -hmm. that uh, it's been around for many, many, many years. Yes. Mm -hmm. Called what a day yeah, that will be. be when my Jesus I shall see when I look up on His face, the one who saved me by His grace when He takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day! day what a glorious yes, day yeah. that will be. Praise God. My mom she turned, stopped, and said to me, "said Son, I didn't know you knew that song. I certainly didn't know you could play it on the piano." Mm. I turned back to mama. I was more stunned than she <laughs> yes, was. was. Hallelujah. And I said, Mama, I didn't know I could Praise do it either. Praise God. But Hallelujah. the Holy Spirit passed by that day and it began Praise to work so in my Lord. life. And that, that gift, that gift has tra caused me to travel now uh, for 44 years. Started Praise in 1978 God. traveling on Praise the road. Praise God. And, uh, Praise God. Uh, the Lord's been mighty good to us. Yeah. And Brother Kenny, you, you, you have played music for uh, a, a lot of groups, gospel groups. Uh, Let's see, uh, one uh, song, uh, singer, uh, what was his name, uh, that you uh, traveled with for a walk? Quentin, Quentin, Mills. Quentin Mills. Quentin Mills, Quentin Mills, yeah. Quentin's so, good friends. Yeah. I, I, I traveled and played and sang with Naomi Seagull for a, a short while, and I've had opportunities to play with other groups and different things. That just is not where the Lord has me <laughs> right, this right. time. We're back in full-time evangelism. And uh, but I'm honored the, yeah. the opportunities that I've had yes. and the invitations I've had to do other things that I didn't even do. You know. And, and plus, I mean, you 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 actually when you record a uh, a, uh, a CD and everything, you do all the music yourself. For, for quite, the quite a bit of it. Yeah, quite yeah. a bit of it. So, I, I got to have some other fellows that know what they're doing on there. <laughs> well, you know, well, I, 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 just, I, just, I just do the little add ins. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, right. But, uh, well, Lord. but Brother Kenny, that, and God gives you that, has given you that, that gift, that opportunity. I mean, and it has taken you not, all, not only, but all over the United States, but to the mission field. Yes, uh, you and times. Sister Nita, y'all uh, y'all do missions uh, in West Virginia. Y'all do. Uh, Outreach and uh, just uh, all over, but then missions and I mean you have been to uh, Haiti. Uh, just name it. I've been in Haiti. I've been in um, I've been in Russia. Been in Vienna, Austria. Then my wife, she loves China. She's been there many times. Mm. Uh, Romanian, Hungary, and you know I, I think of your mother and dad. How your dad had such a heart. For ministry, that uh, he would always connect with ministers and to to uh, implement putting meetings together. He, he was very, very he's very good at that, at putting yeah. things together. You know, uh, you know, to to get the gospel out. Well, Dad, uh, as you know, George was just a simple man. He had a speech impediment. Uh, wasn't very educated, or his education is concerned. Didn't have no doctor's degree or of any sort. But um, he had a heart. Oh to, yes, he to did. To be used of the Lord, and mm -hmm. my dad uh, blessed a lot of ministries he over sure the did. years, and as you just mentioned, open um, um, doors to ministers to go preach. I know personally, my my dad bought gospel tents and paid for them himself mm -hmm. to for somebody to have a place to go preach and mm -hmm. travel trailers and all kind of uh, that kind of stuff, whatever they needed. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Lord had blessed him financially, and he he blessed others with that. He sure did, you know. And he had such a heart for for ministry. And then you know, just uh, just where you're at today in ministry, how the Lord, you know, uh, through what He was doing, your mother's faith, and and then where you're at today, you're you're helping ministry. I think one of, the, and we're going to talk about it here in just maybe that next segment. Uh, we'll talk more about how God is using you to help pastors, evangelists, just get some perspective on ministry. But, you know, there, there's some folks probably watching tonight, Brother Kenny, that, you know, they're thinking, well, you know, I, I, I've struggled through ministry and, you know, I've seen my parents. Maybe they're saying, well, my parents had faith and, and you know, I'm struggling in ministry. But, but in, in ministry, there are going to be those low times and high times. And, sure. and through that, folks have to have you know, in that low time, you just got to keep pressing on through. Yes, you do. Yeah. It's no time to quit. No. And no matter if you feel like you're on the top of the mountain or if the mountain's on top of you, there's still no time to quit because mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says if, we, if we'll if we press on, we'll, we'll endure the battle. Mm -hmm. It says in due season, you'll reap yep. if you faint not. Amen. And Amen. I, I thank the Lord that... We have walked, we have come to, my wife and I have come into a harvest, uh, a season of harvest. We've mm -hmm. and, and been able to um, see the Lord use us and us help others to be used. And 
Um, I, I see a lot of my daddy coming back out in, in me mm -hmm. in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there I was, could see that, that. There would be a time I would probably would have re resented that. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it's th that heart for ministry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lord, the Lord is. Uh, you know, I want, I want, I, I want to see us all. I'm, you are, yes, you sir. are, oh, yeah. I am. We're products of our our families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're, we're products. Oh yeah, of our, our parents. Yeah. yeah, encouraging us. You know, and. Yeah. And, and their prayers, they're, you know, pushing us forward, you know, and saying, hey, you know, uh, every obstacle that you face it isn't, to, isn't to bring you down, but it's, it's, to, it's to build you up. It's, to, you know, to keep you there. Well, Brother Kenny, I tell you, I'll get you back over here and let you sing again here in a few minutes. But listen, you know, the hope we have is in Jesus Christ. And tonight, I just feel like our heart is, uh, is going to be towards ministry tonight. Maybe you just come in tonight... Uh, from maybe a prayer meeting or something, or maybe you've been out visiting. But here's the thing. Anything you do, amen, ministry-wise, God's going to honor that and bless it. Well, Brother Kenny, he's going to sing another song, Holy is Thy Name. With a healing 
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Kenny. And if you'd like uh, Brother Kenny Williamson to come and be a part of your church and for a uh, revival, uh, just uh, if you're having a, a meeting where you need uh, some just some good worship music, Brother Kenny's very, very open, very versatile. Amen. Well, Brother Kenny, so thankful the Lord you took time to come uh, to Greenville and, and be with us and everything. And Brother Kenny, one of the things I know over the years here, especially about the last seven years, you and I have spent more time together one of the things i've noticed the lord is using you in is to is to encourage ministry and to help set some perspective and i know you, you probably don't realize that but i know like for me i know personal ministry things you you help me decide some things and and uh, and all and it's and it worked i mean maybe not for everybody you know because uh, some folks are irregardless of, of what advice you give somebody sometime you hope they take your advice and but you know the bible says here you know in our in our thought scripture tonight second corinthians 5 and 20 that we are we're ambassadors for christ and that word ambassador there means we're representatives and so tonight as as we're talking you know we're, we're we are representing the kingdom of god you know we're representing what the church is all about and I know that, you know, we say the church, and I know that that term is, is used, I know, real loosely. But the church is, is where God resides at, it's, it, you know, and we know it's not a building. We know it's not something just geographically, but it's where the people of God, amen. You know, he said two or three. I mean, I, you, you and I know that God, you know, comes right in whenever there is uh, faith for the Lord to move and, and there's a heart that's true. Uh, towards the things of God. But tonight, I feel like that we're talking to some pastors, ministry. Uh, Brother Kenny, I want you to take a moment and uh, here next few minutes and I'll, and just share from your heart to encourage ministry that, uh, you know, they're not, you know, they're not going through this dry season or this off season of ministry that they're, they feel like they're flat on their face, but that God is working something greater in them that they can produce greater ministry. Yes. Uh, well, as we're just talking here on the set, that um, there are we're we're in a season that the enemy has really come against the church, mm -hmm. and uh, we have went through this COVID issue mm -hmm. that has brought the numbers down as far as attendance of church. Um, if you're evangelists like myself and George and we, when we get out here and we're looking uh, to keep our schedules going, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, a lot of evangelists have <clears> lost <throat> so many many dates because the church is just walking in fear, uh, our concern of uh, what can happen or what will happen. Mm -hmm. um, but the Bible says God's not. The Bible says God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love, and a sound mind. But to go back to your, what you referenced to. I would tell anybody today, you got to know, mm -hmm. you got to know what the Lord has spoken in your spirit. Yes. And when you know what the Lord has spoken in your spirit, it really doesn't matter what things look like around you. You mm -hmm. can stand on the knowing that I've heard the voice of God, uh, as you've already made reference. Yes, I've, I've sat down with men that had a great desire to do something for the Lord, mm -hmm. but yet for some reason or another, they just wasn't sure what that main purpose was, was, was in yeah. their life. You mm -hmm. know, they can, they can do this, they can do that, but they just wasn't sure. And I, I asked him, I said, have you had a visitation from the Lord? Have you, have you heard the voice of God? Do mm -hmm. you, do, can you tell me that, that the time and place where God says, George, I want you to do this. Yes. This is where I want you to go. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them can say, yes, I believe I can do mm -hmm. that. Some others are, uh, would say, no, I, I haven't. 
I heard a voice like right, that. Right. I, I have the desire to do it, uh, and there's nothing wrong with the desire. But you can get ahead. You can get ahead of God um, just by your own desire. Yeah, that zeal. Yeah, yeah. The zeal mm. can trip you up. Oh yeah. And you can get out there and you find, whoops! I, you know, maybe I've jumped ahead of myself or ahead of the Lord. Here, uh, so I would encourage you today, if you are lis listening and watching this tonight, that um, if there's a struggle going on in, in your life, your uncertainty of, uh, of where your future m may be going, I, I want to tell you to seek the Lord till you hear His voice. Now, let me let me be very plain here. God has a voice. Yes, He does, brother. He Kenny. does. Praise speak. the Lord. Amen. You know, He created. He, he created the heavens and the earth Spoke by speaking it. the mm -hmm. word. Mm -hmm. and, and that same God that created the heavens and the earth by speaking the word is still speaking today. But the Bible says many times over, let them that have ears let them hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Mm -hmm. Or we could turn it around and say, let them that have ears, those that have a heart towards God. Let them hear what the Lord is saying unto to them. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, until you have that knowing, you you you, you waver from time to time. Because mm -hmm. every every day is not going to be good. Right, right, yeah. You know, although I've had that visitation uh, in in 1999, I had a visitation from the Lord that put me back out where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you the place I was at, probably within a foot where I st was standing. Uh, I didn't see an individual. There wasn't nobody there except me. But I know I heard the voice yeah. of God. Mm -hmm. And there's been times in this 21 years, 22 years that I've been back out here now, that uh, when I was in a valley or a battle of my life, I'd have to go back to that time and mm -hmm. say, God, I'm the only doing what I know was what you called Told me, me to do. do. Amen. And I'm going to continue to do that till you give me another. You're right. Now, Every season don't last forever. Come on. I mean, I may be evangelizing today, but I may not be evangelizing several years down the road. Only God knows that. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have pastored for oh, yeah. years, but yeah. you're not pastoring so, yeah. today. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're doing different things, but we still got to know what the Lord's will is in our life. Right. And uh, that uh, I deal with. I, I deal with pastors. I deal with. Folks that have great abilities, but they still struggling. Am I doing exactly right. the mm -hmm. right thing? Mm -hmm. And I would encourage you to seek God till you know that you've heard His voice. Then, when and when once you hear that voice, the only thing I can say to that, it will create a foundation in you and a seed of faith that, although hell rages, mm -hmm. you can still stand. Amen. Amen. You know, Brother Kenny, and and I'm and I'm not even uh, back and way shy if. If, if ministry tonight uh, you, that are watching to put a, put a fleece before the Lord. Absolutely. You, say, you know, Lord, if, if I'm supposed to do mission work uh, here am, or am I supposed to do an outreach here, am I supposed to travel? Uh, uh, you know, Lord, I'm going to pray about this and, and you know, and, and here's what I feel in my spirit. And then somebody, someone could, you could be in a meeting and, you know, you, you and I, we believe in the, we believe in prophetical. We, we believe that, and you and I have had it, you know, and, and you and I have moved in the prophetical, but also people have spoken into us and, and said, Doth saith the Lord, this is what the Lord's doing, this is what the Lord's saying. And so, you know, and uh, upon that, right there, that sets in motion that, that you know, for, for us as ministry, I'm, I'm going in the right direction. But like you said, it's not always... It, it, when God does give you a directive, it it does not you know it does not exempt you from hitting brick walls. No, it does not. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I'm reminded very quickly here. Uh, I, I met a gentleman one day, and he and he said, "I've heard of you." And he said, "I'd like to sit down with you sometime and uh, discuss. Uh, I, I'd like to do what you do." Mm -hmm. That's what he told me. And I, so we we set up a time for him to come and George so helped me he come to our meeting place and he come with a big boulder <laughs> he's already he's already figured out he's going to go full-time in evangelism oh, with him my. and his wife and children he'd already figured out how much motels were going to cost for the week oh. how many three meals a, <laughs> a, a day going to cost for, oh. for them and 
uh, got to make the house payment, the car mm -hmm. payments, and all this kind oh. of stuff. And it got it got way up into the thousands, way up oh, into yeah. the thousands. Yeah. He, well, he uh, was doing what the Bible said, counting the costs. He but. was counting the costs. <laughs> he, he was counting the costs. And he come up with a figure that um, when he said the figure, and he, I mean, he had it all. I mean, he, this oh. wasn't just, he put some great thought into oh, this. Absolutely. And um, he had a great job. His wife had a great job. They were both going to quit their job. They are going to go full time in the ministry. And I believe their intent was good. Yeah. I'm not belittling no, no, the gentleman. No, 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 not taking all. nothing away. But um, uh, anyway, when he told me the amount that it was, I said, "Whoa!" <laughs> I said, "You know, I've been out here about I've been out here about ten years now," and I said, "I don't think I made that much in ten years." Said, yes, see, we got bread and bologna. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, and he sort of looked weird at me. I, I said, "Listen, all I can tell you, if God calls you and God has." Put it in your spirit, in your thoughts. He will make a way mm -hmm. where there seems to be no way. way. Mm -hmm. You know, but to put it down on paper, this is what you're going to make per day or per week yeah. or per this month or this year. Um, I said that, that this don't that don't work in the no, way I'm working not, anyway. Yeah, not as faith people, not not as we move by faith. Yeah, yeah but you, you know, I, but Anita and I. I know what it is to be in that battle, knowing I was in the will of God. I know what it is to um, have bills that need to be paid. Paid, absolutely. Um, I, I never will forget one day um, we went to the office, the ministry uh, post office box, and got um, our mail, got our mail at our home, and um, there was more bills than there was any income coming in there. <laughs> and literally, George, uh, uh, Nita called me in her office, and she was really bothered. She was really, mm -hmm. really bothered. Because right there on, on that desk today, that day was about $10,000 worth of bills mm -hmm. that needed to be paid immediately. Y yes, mm -hmm. been there. And, and so I said, I said, you know, it, it bothers me too, to some extent, but... Um, I said, listen, we don't, we're doing all we know to do. I said, let's just pray. We, we both laid hands on those bills right there, and we prayed, God, we, we're doing what you've called us to do. We trust in you. Mm -hmm. We believe in you, and we know that you have supplied in days past, and the same God that supplied in days past will supply these days. Right now, amen. And I will tell you, George, within 24 hours, Ten thousand dollars was in the mail. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Now, Amen. Didn't know a dime was coming in yeah. uh, of any real sort, mm -hmm. but God brought it in. Mm -hmm. uh, to explain that, I can't explain. I'm too simple-minded. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm just a country fella from the Dawsonville, Georgia. <laughs> but but I do know a God that His ways are greater than my yes. ways, and His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Amen. And he's able to supply the need. Oh, hallelujah. So you just got to know. I'm going to encourage you. Yes. You got to know. You got to know. Don't do anything till you know. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's hard on us men that feel like we got a call on our life. Right. Because we want to do something now. But till we know that we know that we, we know. know we heard the voice mm -hmm. of God, stand still and see the salvation of God. And he will speak. And he will guide you, and he will provide. And you know, Brother Kenny, by that happening, the that goes show that is evident, or the evidence that the just shall live by faith. Absolutely. And, and that word "just" means, Lord, I've I've just did all, and and if you and you have justified everything by faith, now I'm now I'm standing by faith. Absolutely. And then God come and miraculously met that need, and that's what He does, and. The opportunity for us is, and I see it, is that obstacle before us, God didn't put it there to bring us down. God put that obstacle there for us to get over it. And so yeah. then when we look back and then we say, you know what, look what the Lord has done. Look, look, look. He, has, he has met every need. Amen. That sounds like a song. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> It sure does, doesn't it? Uh, but you know the the opportunity as men of God, and you know we're we're, and we're talking to to ministry tonight, Amen. That listen, you're you're uh, listen. We we are ambassadors tonight, Amen. You're a representative of the kingdom. You, you listen. Everything may not just fall right in place, 
like Brother Kenny was just sharing how God miraculously, and, and Brother Kenny could tell you time and time again, we could share from our heart how the Lord has met needs every time. But the, the thing that we have to realize is, is that we got to step out by faith and be obedient to God, and God does the rest. Well, Listen. Brother Kenny, going to let you sing another song tonight. Do not pass me by. Pass me not, oh gentle Savior. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Kenny. You know, Brother Kenny, ministry to you, I know uh, people will look at you, and I'm sure like that brother that, you know, uh, seen you and seen the evidence, but he, he didn't see the times and of uh, struggling to, to get a, a van and a trailer hooked up, get your music, get your everything together, getting an RV on the road, and breaking down and getting to point A and getting to the motel and the motel uh, lost your reservation and all those or getting to a church and 
and different things. Uh, I mean, I, I know I, I've, I've got to a church before, but there was nobody there. And that, then, and uh, anyway, they had canceled a revival. I was like, well, I drove all this way, but nobody told me you canceled it. So all these different things. And uh, Brother Kenny, it, uh, you know, as ministry, you can let things like this discourage you. But the thing about it is you've you got to be tough-skinned, amen. And, it, and we always said it, you've got, you got to be like that duck. Uh, you gotta let, it's like water running off of a duck's back. I mean, you can't let these things affect you, and especially in ministry. You're there to help people, but also in that, Brother Kenny, we can't take things personally. And I know uh, in ministry, there's a lot of places that, uh, and I know you uh, I always like when I hear you get to go to a lot of new places because that's very beneficial for you because when people hear your testimony and how God has helped you and, you know, and uh, that opens up a lot of new doors. But one of the things that uh, I want you to share tonight is with ministry. as Because I, I, I just, in my spirit tonight, we're talking, uh, there's some ministry. You, you stop by tonight and, uh, and you're listening to, to these preachers. And, you know, we, uh, Brother Kenny, you and I together here tonight, you know, we've got, uh, you know, a good over, uh, you know, almost 70 years of experience in ministry dealing with people, dealing with churches dealing with situations, and, uh, and I know a lot of times, it, uh, Brother Kenny, it hasn't always been, it, it never ended on a high note every time, but the thing about it is, God always, uh, always come through to help, to encourage, and to be there. I want you to take a moment tonight and, and talk to some pastors and, and ministry also, uh, about staying encouraged in the Lord, encouraging themselves, and not to take things personal, but just keep on and keeping the faith in the Lord. You know, any of us, it's much easier to quit than it is to pr press on. Oh, that's good. Much easier. Uh, there, there's been many days that I, I, or many late nights, let me just put it that way, I've, I've closed a meeting, it didn't go as well as I thought it should have been or, or whatever, and I questioned myself, questioned the situation, observed everything, um, three o'clock on Monday morning heading toward the house, say, you know, I think I'll just sell this motor home, sell the equipment, and I'll just go get a regular job like regular folk. <laughs> live normal. And re live normal. <laughs> and, um, but, um, it's, there, but there's a fire within me that by, by Thursday, I'm, I'm ready to go again. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's like Jeremiah said, there's a fire shut yep. up in our bones. Amen. And, um, there's a word within us. Uh, and there's a, there's a joy that comes when, when we are in the presence of God. Oh, yes. But, as I, as I've said here in the last few minutes, um, I, I really do believe there's someone watching tonight that you once were in ministry, and you're no longer there. Mm. You just you ahead, just you Jesus. just went ahead and oh, settled hallelujah. and said, you know, I've tried, I tried to do what I knew I should have do, but um, I just it didn't go well. Oh, so I just um, I, I may, maybe fallen into sin, maybe fallen into a trap of the enemy. I don't know what caused you to be in the place you're at tonight, but I'm going to tell you, mm. you, you, all you need to do is oh, fall back at the foot of the cross and say, God, here I am again. Touch me, renew me, strengthen me. Hallelujah. And put that fire back in my heart, Thank God, because God, I don't want to, you know, I, I've thought about the scripture many times, George. The Bible mm. says the gifts and callings of God oh. are without repentance. Mm -hmm. um, so, when you you think what that's really saying, oh yeah, it's you. Deep. If you're a minister and you've been called of God, and you you make a conscious a human decision to walk away from it, friend, you you may stand before the Lord with someone's blood on your hand Go ahead. because you're. It was your place, and you were that one that God had ordained to reach someone mm -hmm. that may not get reached because mm -hmm. you got discouraged or fell by the wayside. I want to encourage you to not allow the enemy to bring continue to walk you in condemnation, but walk in a knowing of the Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you. Now, he's speaking to you. 
I believe you, even as you're watching us Amen. tonight, that, the Lord. that um, he, he's drawing you back unto him. He said, you're my child. You're my daughter. I want to use you. I want, I want, to, be, I want to be a vital part in your life. I want to use you to reach many others. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you have got to make that decision. Yes. you got to. God, although God wants it, folks maybe around you want it, they want you to be where you, they know you're supposed to be, but you've got to want it. Yes. You've got to say, God, I realize mm -hmm. that I've, I've stepped aside, but I'm I'm coming back. Yes. Man, I feel the Holy well, Spirit when yes, I do say, I do too. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. God, oh, I'm going to fall at the foot Jesus. of the cross, and I'm going to call out to you, and I'm going to ask you to renew within me uh, the fire of the Holy Spirit burning God, that I, I can't shake it till I get back to that rightful oh, place. Hallelujah. And he'll do that. Now, now let me stop here and say there are others that maybe you got up in the age and the enemy said, well, you're, you're older now. Your health's not good or whatever. That may, all that may be true. Mm -hmm. All that may be true. But, friend, I'm going to tell you, Every day that we, and I've thought of this more and more, George, in the last year than mm -hmm. ever, with all the COVID issues, with all the deaths that have went on all around us, every family has been affected in some way mm -hmm. with this. I, I'm more persuaded than I've ever been that every day that God allows you and I to live, it's to, for our lives to glorify Him. Yes. So I don't care if you're 10 years old or 100 years old, if you're living today, you're living to fulfill the purpose of God in your life. Don't allow circumstances of any sort, whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. it, 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 you don't have to be the biggest name of, of ministry. My, uh, Our little names uh, are oh, not yeah. on marquees. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, uh, yeah, we on TV 16 today, but and we're grateful for the honor of uh, being here. But at, uh, as a whole, we're, we're in smaller churches and mm -hmm, trying smaller, to share yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and be a blessing to people. God gives us opportunities to do bigger venues from time to time. Um, we, we don't have to be the biggest name in town. No, no, All we no. got to be is a vessel that's willing yes. to be used of the Holy Spirit yes. to make a difference in someone's life. That's mm -hmm. all it takes. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not. It's not so bad to be the little guy on the block. Come on, come on. You know, it, all 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 I want to know is when I close my eyes to go to sleep tonight Night. that I've done. Uh, I've lived a life pleasing unto the Lord, and if He put someone in my path tonight well, before I go to sleep that I need to witness to, whether that's at a gas station, station or a restaurant right. or wherever that mm -hmm. may be, God give me the boldness to stand up firm to say what you would give me to say unto them, to lead them back to the foot of the cross. God's got a plan for your life, friend. Sir, ma'am, God's got a plan for your life. You've got to walk mm -hmm. in it. It's your choice. But you can allow discouragement. You can allow circumstances to, to deter you from those things. But please, I beg of you tonight, don't allow that to happen. Let the fire of God burn afresh and anew in your life because he can do it. We're all going to get discouraged. Come on. George has been discouraged. All I've more, been discouraged. More than once. Amen. Um, I probably shouldn't say this on TV. We, 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 we've had our beginning days for, man, we're just simple folks. Yeah. Just. I mean, the first trip I ever made with George Moore uh, was in a little white Pinto yeah. car. Oh. I mean, a Pinto. Anybody remember Pinto watching tonight? We drive a little a Ford Pinto. Uh, Ford now. Pinto. Yeah, right. No air conditioning. The air conditioning was rolled down the windows, and and um, oh. had a little, We had one of our little trips had a had a little trailer that we hauled the equipment, equipment around in. And uh, George is back there trying to hook it up to the van, and we could never get it all hooked up. And uh, it, it's just uh, things we laugh about yeah, now. Look back now. But you, you know, I mm. cherish those memories. Yeah. I cherish those yes. memories. Yes, what a wonderful uh, time. Hey, thank God, thank God for those simple beginnings, yeah. the small beginnings. Because being faithful now that we have been faithful mm -hmm. for many, many years, we're not there today. Mm -hmm. God has blessed us. God has honored our yes. ministries. Yes, yes. He's blessed us with nice homes and nice cars and. And, and, oh, and nice friends and churches that have opened yes. the doors to come and to minister. Bless us. Mm -hmm. And he will do the same. He's not a respected person. If he did it for this simple young man that's speaking to you right now, I promise you he can do it for you. Amen. You know, Brother Kenny, as, as we 
as we encourage tonight. And I, I just, I felt the witness of the Holy Ghost that, you know, you were talking prophetically to someone tonight. Uh, you give up on yourself. You didn't give up on God. You knew God, God could do it, but you give up on yourself. You and Brother Kenny and I tonight, we're just encouraging you. God called you. Man didn't call you. Amen. You, you were able to touch lives. And so tonight, we're just telling you, start afresh, start anew. Listen, God will absolutely begin to move. That anointing will come back. Yeah, the devil will tell you, oh, you're not anointed. You, you don't flow like you used to. Let the devil be a liar. Let God be true. Amen. Amen. Brother Kenny, we're coming up on the last part of this program on the first hour. But I just want to, uh, right now, uh, let, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Let's, as we end this program, this last hour tonight, let's just pray tonight that God will just encourage these uh, ministers that have just got discouraged. And maybe some of them, maybe, maybe tomorrow, they're maybe thinking, well, you know, tomorrow I'm going to turn in my resignation. But God can just turn everything around. Father, we just thank yes. you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Lord, that ministry that's been watching tonight, Lord, we're, we're encouraging them. Brother Kenny and myself, Father, we're encouraging them tonight, Lord, to look up and to know that God is for them, that God is moving in their life to bring their purpose and their plan, their ministry, their song, their preaching, Lord, their evangelism, Lord, whatever it may be. Father, we speak life into it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So the purpose and plan is that God uses your life and that He uses it, amen, to develop, to give you strength, to give you hope. Amen. Listen, because if God be for you, who can be against you? God bless you.